Cuphead started as a video game utilizing classic rubber hose animation, but its popularity has now led to it getting its own Netflix series, and a lot of fans were not sure what to expect from it, with many hopeful that it would feature a serious narrative to it, the way that cartoons like Steven Universe or The Owl House do, despite still relying heavily on comedy. The Cuphead series, however, does its best to live up to the rubber hose cartoon genre, even with its modern animation techniques. While there is an overarching story, it isn't taken very seriously, and thus far, everything has been resolved in comedic cartoon fashion. Like in the Cuphead video game, the first episode of the series features Cuphead losing his soul to the devil, and it is from here that the game and the series really begin to diverge. The show features mostly random, self-contained misadventures in the classic cartoon style, but every few episodes we get one that focuses on the devil, trying to get Cuphead's soul as is owed to him. In the game, however, Cuphead makes a deal with the devil and agrees to collect the souls of other people who owe them to the devil. Cuphead and Mugman travel around the island, attacking people who owe the devil their soul, and then at the end of the game, the player gets to make a choice about what to do with those souls, either giving them over to the devil as promised, or deciding at this point to turn against the devil and fight him to save all these different souls. Cuphead is given a magic potion by Elder Kettle so he can shoot beams, as he expects the people who owe their souls to turn into giant monsters. It's a pretty action-y based plot that could be adapted to be one filled with a lot of drama and an animated series, but the show instead focuses on more traditional rubber hose comedy bits with some modern fun mixed in as well. Despite this, a lot of these characters from the game, these antagonists that you had to defeat in order to collect their souls, still appear in the show as generally antagonistic side characters that Cuphead and Mugman get mixed up with for one reason or another. The first example of this is Ribby and Croaks, two brothers with punching gloves that keep getting into fistfights with each other. Cuphead and Mugman end up sneaking onto their boat in an attempt to get ice cream after the two brothers took what little money they had and threw them in the river. In the game, of course, Cuphead is just chasing after them as just one of the many debtors who owe the devil their soul, and they seem to be on the same boat with the same fancy business going, but the frogs are wearing a lot less fancy clothes here. It is interesting to see how they took these little details in the background and turned it into an episodic story in the series. A less antagonistic character ported from the game to the series is the shopkeeper, who is just your typical go-to for trading gold and various items like in any game, but is more of a fleshed out character in the series where he provides the same function of giving Cuphead characters a place to buy things, but also sends them off on a weird side quest in a one episode where they get things entirely wrong. It is in this episode that we meet a giant green dragon with many heads, who is one of the souls who owe the devil in the game, interestingly, as opposed to just a random animal like here in the show. Now in the series, Cuphead loses his soul to the devil at a carnival game, but in the video game, it was actually at a casino, one run by King Dice, who in the show doesn't appear until episode 5, where he's a game show host instead of working at a casino. The people on the game show still lose their souls, of course, so when Cuphead comes in, it becomes an opportunity for King Dice to get on the devil's good side, though he seems to be, in both versions, high in the devil's hierarchy. In the games, he is one of the final characters you fight before going on to fight the devil, but instead of trying to collect his soul, he is turned against Cuphead because he made a bet. In episode 6, we deal heavily with ghosts, and while they aren't characters per se in the game, there are several side levels where you fight different ghosts to save the spirit of some chalice that gives your character magical upgrades. In episode 7, we meet a group of giant sentient vegetables that are trying to take over Cuphead's family garden, who are some of the first characters you fight in the game. In the show, they're not people who lost their souls to the devil, but a part of a larger species of giant vegetables that use Cuphead's home as a place to throw parties, but are scared off by Elder Kettle when he wants to turn them into a meal. The first season ends with the introduction of a female character named Miss Chalish, who presents in the show as a tap dancer who uses her charm to get whatever she wants, then tries to teach the boys to do the same. After breaking into a cookie factory, the boys end up arrested, and that is how the season ends, though more seasons are already in the works. Interestingly, Miss Chalish does not exist in the original game, but is set to be introduced as part of a DLC expansion of the Cuphead game that added on an extra island filled with new bosses to fight. It took the legendary Chalice spirit encountered in the first game and reimagined her as a playable character with special abilities on top of what Cuphead and Mugman can already do. This game is not coming out until June, so outside of the commercials for it, a lot of people's first experience with Miss Chalice will be as a character in the show, the opposite of how these other more antagonistic characters were introduced first. 
The character of Elder Kettle is very simple in the games, as he exists only to give you the basic information and tools you need to start your adventure. While he is supposed to be something of a grandparent to Cuphead and Mugman, he doesn't really get emotionally involved in Cuphead's adventure in the game. After losing their souls in the game, Cuphead and Mugman run right to Elder Kettle for help, but in the show, they are trying to keep him from finding out about Cuphead losing his soul for fear of punishment. In the show, he is much more of a parental figure, and despite ultimately being on the kid's side, he can be seen as something of an antagonist to the kids for trying to prevent them from having fun and punishing them when they mess up. He has no magic potions or anything like that lying around to help the kids in the show. Though there is always the hope that he will reveal that he has these magic potions in the future to help the kids out with any developing storylines. The first season consisted of only 12 episodes, and especially with them taking time to explore the character of the devil with his overarching story, not nearly all of the bosses from the game have been adapted into the show yet, but I expect more will come. The show has a total of 48 episodes ordered, with these 12 episodes being only the first season, so a second and third, and presumably even a fourth season of equal lengths will be coming out over the next two years, considering Netflix often releases two seasons of their animated shows per year. This will be more than enough to include all of the original bosses from the game, as well as likely include other bosses from the DLC content pack that led Miss Chalice to becoming her own character within the show. Season 2 will presumably open with an episode showing how Cuphead and Mugman end up getting out of jail and establishing Miss Chalice as a recurring character, assuming she doesn't just join the main cast after this amazing introduction. I would particularly like to see some of the more crazy bosses in the game be written into the show, because I am curious how they will rationalize their overlap into Cuphead's life without owing the devil their souls. But perhaps this isn't going to be the formula the show uses forever. It's always possible that season 2 and 3 or onward will show the devil giving up on trying to get Cuphead's soul, and will instead hire him to go after people for their souls like in the game. This may not only be the reason new bosses get mixed into the plot, but also a reason to go back and visit characters from Season 1, like the frogs, as it would be fun for them to recur now that Cuphead has a history with some of the people he has to collect souls from. Like the game though, I imagine the series will end with Cuphead and Mugman ultimately helping all of the various people, and not returning the souls over to the devil, or whatever similar parallel may develop within the show over the course of the 48 episodes, but who knows. Did you guys watch Cuphead? Were you fans of the game first? Did you expect the show to be like this, or did you want something else? Let me know in the comments down below. I do actually read all the comments for the record, I heart react to the ones I like, reply when I feel I have the time and energy, but I generally read every comment on a video for the first five days or so that this video is up, even if I post other videos in the meantime, as it's how I constantly update my approach to making content. So go ahead and leave any and all thoughts you have in a comment down below, and while you're down there, why don't you go ahead and click that subscribe button so you don't miss it when we make future videos. You know there's going to be a few more seasons of Cuphead, so we're going to want to talk about that. See you later!